This video is literally about when somebody goes in and uses electrotherapy, it can be TENS, interferential, it can be anything. They often wonder, justifiably so, what is the theory that makes pain, chronic pain I'm referencing, work? Or how do you inhibit it so it doesn't, a person doesn't have pain? And there's basically three theories that go, one of them is not a theory, one of them is very well proven, however it doesn't seem to work very often, but I wanted to go through in a very short snapshot of what the three theories are. Let's start off first theory, one that's accepted across everywhere. It's called the Melzack wall gate control theory of pain. That's a mouthful. But what it's about is basically, and I like to use this analogy, way back when we first had telephones and you had an operator that would work in a city, you might have 100 people that had a telephone, but yet when they would call into the operator in the city, she may have had he or she, generally it was she, she may have only had 10 lines that she could have let people use. So 90 people had to wait until a line opened up. That's the Melzack wall gate control theory of pain. What it basically is, here's your spinal cord and say there's 100, mess, 100 lines up there that they can take all sorts of messages. Not just pain, plenty of other messages. Basically what happens is the pain message, unless you close the gate, it's like the telephone call that somebody wants to make. If you don't close the gate and allow the message to be transported up to the brain, you can't have pain. It can't be done. So when anyone says pain's in your head, of course it is. That's where it is. That's where it's perceived. But if you don't let it get there, you can't have it. Now, what you're doing with electrotherapy is you're stimulating non-pain fibers. They're called, pain fibers called C-fibers. You stimulate non-pain messages that are carrying something other than pain. So if you can make them hyperactive, they become the most important. Like that old operator that was sitting there in the shop and somebody says, I've got a fire. I've got to get the message through. She clears up a path so it can go through. All we're trying to do is stimulate non-pain messages and that's called the Melzack wall gate control theory of pain. It's that simple. In practicality, what you're always trying to do with any type of the infrax, the interferential unit, uh, a TENS unit. All you're ever trying to do is stimulate non-pain fibers so that your pain is not perceived in the brain. Second theory, and this isn't theory, this was actually proven. Uh, about 1981, 82, 83, um, uh, there was a doctor named Scholin. This was over in Europe. Uh, I don't know if it was Sweden or wherever. But basically what Scholin came out with is he showed if you stimulate the pain fibers, which are C fibers, that what our body actually does is it produces all these painkillers, and they're called opiate peptides. The thing you've probably heard about is enkephalins, endorphins, which are only part of this whole group. And what literally is going on is they would take a patient and they would see how many painkillers did they have in them. I'm just using it as an example. Let's say in the total blood volume, they find one ounce of painkillers. Well, with one ounce of enkephalins, endorphins, and so on and so forth, the patient was still in chronic pain. So they would stimulate the C-fiber. Now, rather than one ounce, let's say there's two ounces. As long as there was more than one, then the patient was pain-free. So they would stimulate the C-fiber. And then after they'd stimulated that, you could then look at the blood, see what type of increase you had. As long as it stayed two ounces or less, two ounces or less then the patient was pain-free. As soon as it got back down to one ounce, pain came back. That's the thing you hear about the body producing painkillers and that's the way they do it. Now I can tell you, practically speaking, rarely ever will that work from a practical perspective. The latest thing that has happened that I wanted to tell you about, and that sort of prompted this video, is in the pain practitioner. There's a very interesting article out now about glial cells. And it's from a Linda Watkins, PhD. She's at the University of Colorado. But one of the things that uh, Dr. Watkins has actually found out in our study and is researching is we have glial cells like in our spinal column and one of the things that happens, these glial cells are on nerves. One of the things they are doing is they can either inhibit different receptors coming through that can modify pain. And what Linda actually does in her article, she gets more heavily involved in the chemistry 
of what goes on in the body with chronic pain. And it's very interesting because one of the things we have noticed with now that people can do interferential and do a portable interferential and treat when they want to is they have this carryover pain relief or what we call residual pain relief. And all that simply means is the patient can take an interferential treatment and go for some time period pain free before they have to have another treatment, weeks, days, uh, whatever, which is interesting because technically carryover pain relief is supposed to come generally from what was the Sholin endorphins and caffeine pain, pain situation. That was what would happen. But when you're doing interferential therapy, you're not doing it the same way that you're stimulating C fibers. You can stimulate C fibers, but we're not generally as an application doing that. But I thought that was very interesting. If you get a chance, you should read about the glial cells because they are giving a new understanding of what possibly could be the reason that we have carryover pain relief. Thanks for watching the video.